good afternoon and welcome back to the program on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasik and this is a touchline show that comes your way every Saturday. One, two, three, we're talking about our sporting disciplines, both local and beyond. And of course, I'm still with Fred Openda, my guest co-host, of course, standing in this particular afternoon for Robert Osoro, who's not feeling very well. But a robust duo is joining us right now. Sami Mraya, sports journalist, has been here before he's not an unfamiliar face and so is Narwa Kamuya, sports lawyer, also joining us. And gentlemen, uh, pleasure to have you one more time. Sami, let's start with you. Of course, we've seen the threats by sporting uh, betting firms uh, over their tussle with the government with regards to taxation. And yesterday, a pronouncement last evening coming out of one of the leading betting firms, Sport Pesa, indicated that they have cancelled the funding of all sporting activities in the country. And that means that, you know, entities like FC Leopards, Gourmet Football Club and Football Kenya Federation that were sponsored by Sport Pesa have suffered a huge setback. First of all, my question, is Sport Pesa justified to have, you know, to <laughs> have a tug of war with the government over taxation? Uh, well, I'll start by saying thank you for having me. Um, and... Uh, I'll go straight to it. Uh, we have two bulls here that are in the ring. And both of them are muddying themselves and taking a very hard stand. Uh, but unfortunately, um, I think on this, if you ask me whether sport person is justified, I would say no. Because if it is true they've not paid taxes that they were supposed to have paid, then uh, they know it's their obligation. It's something they signed on when they started their company. And we are looking at taxes that go back a whole five years. Should they have actually tried to be hard, write to KRA and ask them uh, to allow them to pay these in installments, other people are allowed to do so, then that would have been a better solution for, for, for them. Uh, but uh, for Sport Pesa to pull out, they've made so much money in Kenya over, over those years that, that they've been uh, in Kenya. And uh, I know right now it's very difficult for you to pay over over. 50 billion in, in taxes because that again will run you to the ground because I'm very sure that over the, the period where, where they're being told they've not paid uh, taxes, the money has been used, the money has gone uh, into other investments. So it's not possible for them to be able to bring all that cash on the table. So uh, we have two people here who need to sit down and agree on the way forward because at the end of the day, um, it's most of our teams that are going to suffer it's FKF that is going to suffer. But then, uh, having sat here with Ngarua, I remember two months ago, we were talking about alternative ways in which uh, these clubs can be able to make money. Uh, the federation should not be relying on a betting company to give them money. That doesn't happen um, anywhere else in the world. It only happens in Kenya. Most federations always prefer being independent because uh, when you have a firm that comes and put, pumps in most of their money in the league, then it means they call the shots. From a legal perspective, I know before we sign a contract in terms of uh, sponsorship, I'm an entity, you are uh, a corporate, you are funding me. We have an agreement, a contractual agreement, so that there's no violation in between. Sportpress, I know it did sign the contracts with, of course, the entities that have been sponsoring FC Leopards, Goma Football Club. At some point, mm. they were in rugby as well, Football Kenya Federation. Do you think... These entities, now that Sport Press has cancelled funding their sporting activities, can seek legal address to address this for violation of contract? Theoretically, yes. They can seek legal um, redress. But practically, I don't think it can happen. And the reason I say that is uh, to Sami's point. Um, you're in a situation where um, Sport Press or these betting firms are the ones who are calling the shots. These guys are the ones who have been giving you money over the years. And you don't want to lose that revenue. Because if you take them to court, then guaranteed, there's no way they're coming back to sponsor you. Why would I want to be sponsoring somebody who I'm fighting with in court? So theoretically, yes, from a contractual perspective, yes, there's a way that they can be able to seek legal redress. But practically, I don't see it happening. And, and just to bring in another point, um, just to not you haven't asked me the question, but just to comment, <laughs> just to comment on what uh, uh, you asked Sami about sport person being justified. My opinion is that they are justified, and the reason I say this is the the laws that have been prescribed for this gaming industry are things that were addressed by both parties last year when sport person pulled out. 
Now I understand where sport person is coming from when they're saying that you've hiked the bit, the the tax the on winnings from seven point five percent all the way to thirty five percent instead of guys sitting down and talking. They sat down, they talked, and they said, okay, fine. 20% is going to be borne by sport pesa or the betting firms, and then 15% is going to be borne by the winner, the person who takes it. Now, what guys do not understand is what this tax is on, right? This tax is in what's called net winnings. If 200 million shillings has been bet over the weekend or in one day, and of the 200 million shillings, 100 million shillings is winnings, you, do, you take the difference. The difference in this case would be 100, 100 million, right? Mm -hmm. If you take the difference, that 100 million is what's supposed to be taxed at 20%. Now, here is something very interesting. and it's a, I did a lot of research about the time when sport persons were pulling out, and I talked to very many people at the authority, and this is what they say. This tax that we are all complaining about, the 20%, has been prescribed by something called the Betting, uh, Gaming, and Lotteries Act. As far as KRA is concerned, that is not one of their acts. Their acts is the Income Tax Act, VAT Act, Tax Procedures Act, Customs. So it's not a tax prescribed under their act. If it's not prescribed under their act, KRA's argument is, for all intents and purposes, this is considered an expense. And if it is considered an expense, then Sport Pesa have the right to claim it at the end of the year. And I think Section 15 of the Income Tax Act. And I think those are the loopholes that Sport Pesa have been using. And that reduces their tax obligations. Of course, there's the issue of sponsoring sports. Section 15, again, of the Income Tax Act. The money that you use towards sponsoring sports is an allowable deduction. So are we looking at all these things before we start blaming Sport Pesa about the tax that they haven't paid? Because to me, it looks like it's a political witch hunt. We know that KRA are trying to raise money in all matters possible, and it's not happening. There are very many loopholes that they've created in the law, and Sport Pesa are are, are, are using it, or the betting firms are using it. So I don't think it's right, because, and I know where Sport Pesa's fear is coming. You are being taxed this money that's supposed to be going to a lottery, that's supposed to be funding sports. <laughs> what are the chances? There's been a sports budget in the last three, four years, even before that came into play. What has happened to that sports budget? Fred of <laughs> does the government getting opportunistic, you know, capitalizing on a situation that there is an already existing sports fund which will cut up for you know, any void left by Sport Pesa, who've been bankrolling several sporting activities in the country. I remember Everton uh, visited the country, cut us off Sport Pesa, and you know, several <laughs> arguments with regards to whether Sport Pesa really uh, contributes to the growth and development of the sport or its PR exercise. I don't know. Uh, I'm just going by the thoughts I, I don't, <laughs> on I, the I, street. I, but <laughs> is, is the desperate situation of Kenyan sporting entities also? A factor as to why Sport Pesa should issue threats to the government. Actually, it's not a threat. This is business. If I'm not making money, why should I sponsor you? Because they have, they have closed their pay bill numbers for a month or so. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not making money. Why should I sponsor you? You can't say that I made money before, so I should continue sponsoring. If I'm not making money right now, there's no need of continue, uh, sponsoring. And as, as, as uh, Ngarwa said, we had that uh, sports budget before even Sport Pesa came in. What has, has it been able to do? It has been able to do a minimal, it has a, had a minimal impact on the sports industry. But once Sport Pesa came in, you see it's sponsoring teams, Gore, FC, the Premier League, so, and, and rugby at some time, mm -hmm. you see. So uh, for them to say that they are pulling out, uh, they are very, very much justified to, 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 the, to the point. And, and uh, Sami, if, if I may ask, Kare is saying that Sport Pesa has not been paying tax for five years. Uh, question arises. Where were they? Because they, they renew these taxes every year, I think. Where were they? Where was the government when these people were not paying taxes for five years? They've been issuing tax compliance certificates. Exactly, they've been, they've been issuing tax compliance certificates. So, so why, why? Granted, yes, Kerry has a mandate and they can go back and say, okay, fine, we think you guys did not pay XYZ and we're raising assessments. But I think that it's very drastic in the way they're going yeah. about it. You raise assessments, sport person says they dispute and they say, you know what? No, us guys will be paid all our taxes. That's why you have the tax appeals tribunal. Exactly. Go and address those issues there. But, the, but when you start shutting down pay bills, when you start grinding their business to a halt, then it looks like there's something that's coming, that's behind. And you know the reason they use is this religious angle <laughs> that yeah. we are, what, what's the word? 
our youth, morality, our morality, youth. Our youth. <laughs> then to shut down all the casinos in this town. <laughs> that's a still vibe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shut down all the casinos in this town. If that's what you're going to be saying. Mariah. But <laughs> wait, no, 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 before you ask me a question, I just need to check here. And my question is, um, why is it that it's only spot pesa that is crying out at the moment and i know bettine as well is also affected and uh, they actually even closed the kenyan website this week and that's an international so have the biggest market so when you start saying about taxes of five years that's a whole lot of money and this is why they're complaining you know you should have allowed me to finish yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because then you would have known what i want to say because um i this is me throwing a spanner in the water, yeah. agreeing with you in a, in a way, mm -hmm. uh, because we also need to figure out who owns the other betting companies, because uh, uh, there is talk mm -hmm. that some of them are politically mm -hmm. owned, mm -hmm. and that's what I was asking, so why just sport person and betting, because those are the two biggest companies that we had in the country, and uh, why, I like the fact that you cited the laws and what is happening, because um, at the end of the day, then they're just beyond going uh, to legal redress or going to court there's always mediation and some of these processes are processes that um, allow for mediation allow for arbitration to come in and people talk and agree on some of these issues so why is it that all of a sudden we are seeing some companies that are thriving out of the silence of the two giants um, i don't want to name them but uh, there's one that actually even launched a mega jackpot for 100 million this week and one of the ones that were never closed down at any point even when we had the threats uh, to around 20 companies there are some that were never mentioned anywhere so um i i think that's where we also need to query as much as i might say still Sport Pesa is still obligated to pay tax. I'm not going to defend them, but it has to be done in a just manner. Mm -hmm. So let's not also have this blanket feeling where we feel that one party is um, trying to overshadow the other or, or I'm twisting the other. Mm -hmm. Both of them are at fault at this particular point. The stand taken by uh, CS Matiangi, not a very wise one. We know him as a tough talker, yes, uh, but then is even the right person who should be questioning some of these things because Matiangi uh, is interior minister. So uh, is he the right person to be doing this? Is, does that fall under his docket? Yes, we know he is the super CS. But then who exactly should be decrying the whole issue about non-payment of taxes? We should be hearing it directly from KRA. The, 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 the angle that interior are using is that very many of the guys who are running these companies are here illegally. And that definitely. And some of them were deported. And some yeah. of them were deported, and that falls under his docket. Yeah, yeah. He can use. I mean, if there's somebody who has a white birth, <laughs> it's 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 interior. It's, it's interior. Yeah. They can use whatever they they want to use um, to make their point. And I think that is exactly what's happening in this particular case. It's unfortunate. Um, like I'm saying, um, granted, these guys have used loopholes, and it's business. It's everywhere in the world. It happens. There are loopholes at the law. <laughs> the law is designed to have loopholes. <laughs> and, if, and, if I'm, and if I'm sharp enough to use those loopholes, the then you can't fault me. I mean, you guys are the ones who make the laws. So you can't fault me. <laughs> Brendo Penda, there is always <laughs> another argument. <laughs> I've seen various arguments, both on social media platforms and even on the streets, football followers, uh, most of them Kenyan, arguing. And there is another one. That indicates that how come Sport Pesa haven't cancelled the sponsorship of you know overall entities like Everton, like Formula One, uh, Tanzanian you know, sides like yeah. Simba? Yet <laughs> their most fan base it's comes Kenya. from Kenya. That's where a lot of you know and, and betting enthusiasts yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, actually, <laughs> Does it also there's, raise there's, there's, there's a time Kenya was mentioned in a UK parliament mm -hmm. on issues betting. I know, but remember. If Sportpesa is still making money in the other markets, they they still continue uh, sponsoring them. They they uh, still con continue sp sponsoring. Them. But if Kenya, we are not going to give the, them that avenue of making cash, then trust me, even closing, shutting down the Kenyan market, they can do it. They can do it and venture into other markets. Are they using Kenyan revenues to? No, just Fine. just allow me, allow me to comment on that. Yes. Uh, about two months ago, two three months ago, I attended a sports law con uh, conference. Um, 
this guy, I forget his name. He's a very I think it was at the theater. Exactly. He's yes. a very complex uh, Spanish name. He's the, he's a, he was a lawyer who did the Neymar deal, the 198 million euros. He's done, and he's a big time uh, in Spain and in Europe generally in terms of sports law. And he made a comment because the, there was a panel session afterwards that had um, chairman of the sports tribunal, uh, John O'Haga, John Haga, mm -hmm. uh, Roslyn Smiu, the registrar of sports, and a couple of lawyers. And, and there was a discussion. And they said... Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, betting and its effect on sports? And the Kenyan people are saying, oh, you know, uh, these are the future leaders. You know, gambling is a bad <laughs> habit. If you ask me, very <laughs> funny excuses. And I wanted to actually ask, especially the registrar of sports, if you say the future leaders, do you know who the president of Liberia is? Yes. George Ware. Mm. How did George Ware become president? Would he have become president if he never had a chance to... To, to, uh, through sports. No. Anyway, I divert. So we got back into the main story. And this guy said, the lawyer, the, um, what was his name? One somebody. Anyway, he. I'm also forgetting he, his yes. name. It's a complex and, one. And he made the comment and he said, Is it a rumor? Is it lies that half of the uh, revenue generated by uh, European leagues is from betting? It is. It, it is. It, it's not a lie. Mm. Half is. of the revenue generating, generated by European clubs is through betting. Mm. So why? He said, this is what you should do. You shouldn't ban betting, but regulate it. Exactly. And like we're talking off air, the framework and the regulations and the legislation is there. It's just a matter of implementation. These are knee-jerk reactions that don't make sense. These are knee-jerk reactions that don't make sense. Betting happens everywhere in the world. It happens everywhere in the world. I just don't think that we're handling it the right way. Well, Arwa, Arwa, I, I have yes. When, when you talk, talk about, about regulation, regulation yeah. because so at the moment uh, the people that are basically doing regulation are BCLB. And uh, from the way they are doing it, you can literally tell that uh, it's like this was a big thing that they never expected, unfortunately. Because you look at the way BCLB was set out uh, in the past and even in the act because uh, the, the, the act itself has not been reviewed. It's still the same, same old act. Um, they were literally dealing with, I'm trying to remember that company that used to scratch their cards. Well, what is charity sweepstake? They were literally set out to regulate charity sweepstake and another card. And uh, there was another one called something Toto. The total six, something. six yes. that one. Yeah. Those, Those were the two companies. companies. Yeah. So, so them also, also now taking in all these many companies that have come in, they needed to. They need to actually amend their act. They need to look at how they can be able to accommodate the changes. One in technology, the changes in how betting has has actually t uh, taken a new life because that's exactly what is happening. And until that happens, we are still going to have the same problems because at the end of the day. If we have a regulator in BCLB, we should not have government interference because regulators are supposed to be independent as much as they are under... Exactly. But like you're saying, they're independent, independent of the exactly. government. And you see, let me use an analogy. Uh, I think four years ago, Kenya changed their company laws. We were operating under their cake company laws in, from independence. Does that mean companies stopped operating? No. There were just amendments that were happening every day to the law to tweak and to adjust to what is happening in the economy. And that's what I think should be happening. You shouldn't shut down uh, completely and say, okay, you know what? We need to start legislation. We need now to start drawing up the regulations. So we'll shut you guys as us guys work on the legislation. I think it's some sh that's something that should be systematic. You started with the taxing. You've already did that. You're done with the taxing. Now bring in more um, uh, legislation to beef up BCLB and to give them more powers to handle this thing. Like I'm saying, it's not, there's nothing new under the sun. It's happening in the West. It's happening in, okay, in, in, uh, in the East, I guess, because uh, China is also becoming a very big market for sports. These benchmarking tours that MPs go for, <laughs> what are they for? What are they for? <laughs> if you cannot go and learn uh, what is happening in other countries and come and implement it and tailor it according to the laws uh, or, or your market in Kenya, right? So they just, it's a knee-jerk reaction, if you ask me. And just find their conspiracy theories and it's he said she said but you can understand when sammy makes the comment that he's making that this looks like there's something that's happening behind the scenes i know corporate confidence is also an integral part when it comes to funding these sporting federations and s several corporates have shied away coming to bankroll kenyan sporting industry because of you know lack of trust and at the helm of those who are in charge sporting administrators managers and value for 
somebody's money is an aspect. Maybe sport pesa while pumping uh, their money into Kenyan sporting industry, they have also been gaining its butter and it's reciprocative. Mm -hmm. But even as we argue that, you know, much revenue that is generated in European football mm -hmm. comes from betting companies, is it wrong for betting companies to fund sports, particularly in Kenya, because match fixing is also, it comes out. <laughs> not really, not really. It's, it's, as we said, betting is also a business. Generally, it's business. So it's, it's not wrong for a corporate like uh, the uh, like sport pesa to come out you know it's it's kind of a corporate social responsibility i'm getting money from this market this is something i can give back so it's not really wrong it's better actually better for the sporting industry May, maybe not even the sporting industry there's there some things other things that they can do water projects uh, maybe uh, maybe do some projects in the northern, northern parts of Kenya irrigation, uh, something, so, 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 some of those things. But for sports, it's only for, it's good because it's, for marketing, it's appealing. If, mm -hmm. for, for the market, it's appealing because most of the betting guys are into sports. But there are some other things that they can be able to do outside sport. So let them come in. And as, uh, as Ngaro is saying, as Murai is saying, sit down and see what we can do. Not having hard stances on each on, on both uh, parties. Because now, as, as Mariah is saying, we are having two bulls that are fighting. And there is none of them that seems to go down and backtrack uh, and see where, where did the ring start beating us. So it's, it's, it's all about uh, them coming to the table and sit down and lay down the framework of how we can go on with this gaming industry the two of you we've had this mm. particular discussion several <laughs> times and i've been contacted by the way yeah. by various uh, federation officers who are asking me come on these guys you bring on the show what they say looks like you know it's a viable thing but is it practical or it's just analysis <laughs> so the way forward on sports funding now that sport has has uh, terminated uh, its contract with you know uh, funding sporting activities mm. in the country, federations, associations, clubs, and teams. What's the way forward? Are we going back to being serial beggars, exposing our balls and, mm. you know, trying to seek well-wishers and good Samaritans coming on board to support us when we know very well that that's not self-sustaining? Well, well, the, the biggest, biggest problem, problem we have is relying on one source of revenue. Uh, for most of one, our uh, federations, and two, uh, for the clubs and teams, and also just other individual sports where we're actually seeing most of these bet betting companies putting in their money. The reason why Sport Pesa um, has been putting the most money in sports is because they've been here the longest, and uh, we could identify with them as Kenyan until when these problems started coming in and we realized it was not Kenyan at all. Um, I think from the word go, we always knew it as a Kenyan company. So what the federation needs to now I'm talking about the football, football federation, boxing federation, who's been funded uh, by Sport Pesa before, and uh, the clubs that you've mentioned. You're talking about Gorma here, talking about AFC Leopards. Look for other sources of revenue. There's a reason why you have a, a team, and I'm sorry, sometimes I give um, examples of Manchester United, not because of I support them, but because uh, we have um, a director, we have uh, the CEO there, Ed Woodward, whose main focus is generating income. He doesn't buy players. He doesn't... He's, him, he just thinks so about which noodle... Exactly. Yeah. Which, yeah. which which noodle company can come and sponsor us? Which wine company can come and put in some money? Rangi Aviatu, Uigani... You know, that's the thing. Which beer we have, as in... Th that's one he team care that has an official breakthrough of the team a sponsor for literally everything, everything inc including cutlery that yes. they use so I, I think that's the way we need to go as kenya because sports is a big industry we have the funds and we just need uh, one of the questions that we always ask is the people who consume sports can't they be able to support sports and the answer is yes they can so it's all about being able to brand ourselves in such a way that is more accommodative to them and the reason why sometimes i look at uh, rugby for example because you and i love our rugby the reason why money is not being pumped there anymore is because yes we had the fan base yes we had teams that were doing very well we had a very uh, national team uh, that's the seventh team that was doing very well the 15s also started rising but the corruption within the federation itself cannot allow corporates to come in so we just need to rebrand uh, need we need to sit back look at ourselves internally 
and ask ourselves questions and just brand ourselves as something that is viable, as something, an entity that is above board, and that way we will be able to literally attract anyone that we go to. Max, but if you yes. ask me, um, if I was government in this whole sport person situation, this is what I would be doing. Fine. Uh, there's a contentious issue. You're saying that these guys have been paid 50 billion in taxes over the last five years. And there's a possibility there's some tax there that they actually haven't paid. Now you sit down, you mediate, and you say, you know what, okay, fine, granted, we'll knock off, let's say it's 30 billion shillings, but don't pay the 30 billion to us. Our work is what? Is infrastructure. Our work as government is infrastructure. So you guys do this. We are going to give you rebates, and we are going to give you concessions in various things, but you guys use that 30 billion to construct infrastructure in this country. Sports infrastructure. Yes, sports infrastructure. So put up stadiums and modern stadiums, do that stuff um, all over the country, and then ask us, 30 billion is a hell of a lot of money for putting up stadiums. We don't need big stadiums, so put up a rugby stadium. You already have a football stadium in Kasarani. Put up a, a, a modernize the, the basketball uh, gyms. You know, that's what you do in terms of infrastructure. You guys can have the naming rights, and, exactly. the, and the guys I see who do it very well are uh, Emirates. Uh, you know, they take up a stadium and they have the naming rights for about five, six years, and they really soup up the joint, and the joint looks very nice. So that is the way I would be looking at it. Stop holding these guys and telling them, you know what, you have to pay this 30 billion to KRA. No, one of your work, or one of the responsibilities you, has, you have as government, especially from a sporting perspective, is to put up the infrastructure. Now, that 30 billion, I'm sure they want it to go to KRA for other things. Mm. No. <laughs> so if, it, if, if, if we agree, Sport Pesa, fine, the tax you guys must pay is 30 billion shillings. We'll give you concessions. We'll give you rebates. We'll make it good for you guys. We'll make it easy for you guys. But there's a condition. This amount that you had to pay taxes in the last five years, channel it into the development of sports. Well, now uh, that's that's a very good idea. Yeah, but this is good, eh? the, 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 the <laughs> We are talking about personal interests because. <laughs> Infrastructure. I think all of us have seen what Paul Kagame has done in Rwanda. Yes, the, the basketball, uh, basketball facility uh -huh. that will even be hosting NBA finals. Yeah. That's a big plus yes. uh, with regards to growth and development of sport because mm. infrastructure is a key. Because we all remember that uh, Kenya missed out, missed out on hosting Chan because they were not ready. Mm -hmm. Preparedness, readiness in terms of facilities, mm -hmm. we weren't ready. So it's the key as well. And the one time we were ready, we had ended up hosting the under 18. Uh, well, the IWF. One of the 18 championships. Yeah, well, and it's coming back and to Kenya next year. Under, yeah. 20, oh, under, 20, under 20. So, like you're saying, you just need... And it's not hard. We we make it look like it's a monumental task. It's not hard. Well, Narwa, yeah. we have a <laughs> stadium, stadium that was supposed to be complete <laughs> yes. uh, in December of 2017. And, and until result? today, yeah. uh, we're still, we're still hearing, hearing stories about, about when it will be complete. That's why I say it's all yeah. about personal interest. Yes. Coca-Cola tried what, what you've spoken yes. about in terms of uh, what the is doing with, with yeah. Nyao Stadium. Yeah. But because uh, some people's palms were not uh, very well greased, <laughs> <laughs> it became an issue. It became an issue. Safari <laughs> did it at Kasarani, and yes. you remember how Kasarani looked good for about five years. So it, it can, <sighs> we just have, like we were talking off air, we have guys who are leading sports who are very archaic in their thinking. Um, they're still, they don't look at it like a business. They don't look at it from the perspective that if you grow the sporting industry, you can imagine the amount of jobs you create, because it's not only for the sport people. Remember, like you're saying, you need a business, like at Manchester United, there's a whole business development team. You need marketing guys, you need ops guys, you need finance guys, you're creating employment. Think about even in the team itself, you're creating jobs as coaches, you're creating jobs as doctors, you're creating jobs as uh, trainers and all this stuff. I was, think, I was looking at um, the football team in Atlanta, I've forgotten what it's called. The, 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 I've forgotten what it's called, but anyway, they poached um, the guy who was the corporation secretary at West, uh, at, uh, the company secretary at West Brom to be a director. And I remember thinking to myself, as guys finish law school, you're only thinking about law firms. You can actually get a job in an institution like that, mm -hmm. which is, you can imagine how interesting it is, you know, working in such a team. Like um, we were talking, Ed Woodward is an investment banker. The only way he got into Manchester United is because he structured the deal for the Glazers family, right? So. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of jobs to be created. We just have people who uh, sit on their backsides in the office and do absolutely nothing. And uh, they just don't look at sports as a business because all this, the template is there.
it's just a matter of implementation. So sports is big, it's, it's so it's, huge, it's it, massive. Yeah. Mm. It's big and, and and for government you only need to show them one thing. If you guys do this thing the right way, you're creating jobs. That is pay. Those yeah, are taxes you're, yeah, you're getting. Exactly. You're getting if, taxes. If, if you promote this industry, because these things will have to be run as corporate organizations, that's corporate tax coming into play. There are so many things. There is dividend income. Ah, it, it's so many. As in, there's so much money the government can make from it. It's very true. Yeah. I remember there's a question I saw just before we went on here. Um, whether sports should be part of the big four or five and i was saying sports should actually be number one or number two mm -hmm. uh, reason being if you look at uh, the way sports was designed back in the early 90s and uh, in the 80s we had olympic sports centers we had youth centers in every literally um i remember back then if you come to nairobi there was a Shaurimoyo social hall. There was Pumwani. Um, boxing was heavy. Boxing was very heavy. Um, you go to the Mta Jericho, there's a, there's a pitch there. You go to Ziwani, they had their own pitch. As in, we had a government back then that already knew the importance of investing in youth and investing in sports. Unfortunately, we have a government now that knows the importance of that, but then they prioritize other things above sports and ab and a government that keeps on talking about youth employment and like narua says that's the easiest way in um i was seeing our girls who are, are playing uh in israel saying they went they went to play a sport without kids and uh, uh, what happened is they played uh, the, the israel team and then when now they went to support the israeli team these girls felt sorry for them and they gave them kids free of charge so that is the problem that we have, as in you, we are literally um, getting teams that are coming up here, um, going out there to represent a whole nation, and then they are getting donations because the government itself is not supporting them. And once the government invests in sports, even the corporates yeah. will do it very, very easily. Like they did, they did with the national team around the stars in Egypt. Was yes. that sufficient? Uh, yeah. And the, do you think that is the way forward? Actually, that's now the way they should go. Uh, we on, need on sports, not not just an occasion because we have qualified for, for the African Cup of Nations. It should be a daily thing, you know. These are frameworks that should be laid down from the start. That this long term is going policies, to, exactly long term policies. Not that when we qualify for the for the Afcon is when now they come out supporting the team. Actually, if they are supporting the team from the start, they do not need to do that when we qualify, because the team will be uh, sufficient. Because be, uh, uh, basketball, the Morans did exceptionally well, tremendous exactly, performance yeah. in Bamako Mali mm -hmm. during African Basketball Championship, finishing as runners-up without, you know, proper funding from exactly. the government, you see that? poor That's preparations the, because of yeah. lack of, you know, I'm almost sponsorship. Certain. I'm almost certain that the policies are there, but uh, the problem is implementation. That has been the biggest problem in this country, implementation. I know it's a different story, but just to show you what the problem is, um, I was having a chat with somebody who served in the Kibaki administration, and he used to tell me that uh, Kibaki used to walk into meetings and tell them, you guys think I'm doing magic. All I'm doing is just implementing things I drew up in the 70s. 70s true. So the policies are already there. All I'm doing is just implementing. Execution. It's just execution of these policies. And I, I'm almost certain that these things are there because people are not stupid. I mean, government has some of the brightest brains we have in this country. I don't think people are stupid. I just think it's a case of number one, we in the sporting fraternity still have that Serikali idea mentality. Mm -hmm. We depend on handouts. We don't see, when you sit down and pitch to guys ideas as to how you can revolutionize sports and make it a business, first, I'm sure you have to be buying them drinks. Yeah, for them to, what, yeah, what, what do you have? <laughs> for them, Sami was saying uh, just uh, off air that the problem is that we who sit down and have seen this roadmap and can put these plans down, uh, unfortunately, maybe don't have the financial muscle that some of these guys have. So you will buy into my idea, you as the electorate, you'll buy into my idea, you will know definitely that this is the guy who can bring in the money. But just because he's not greasing your hands for a vote, you are not going to vote for him. And uh, uh, Naro, party, on, on, our, on our way forward, good. Yeah. It's good that you're on the party <laughs> <laughs> because I was going to talk about uh, the way forward. Mm -hmm. As a sports lawyer, I'm tasking you with the responsibility. Um, one, we've, we've sat here. We're talking about a sports fund. We will always talk about it. How much money is in that sports fund? As a lawyer, why don't you use the Access to Information Act to get the information so that we can... Too. We, we need, need to know how much money is in the sports fund, how much has been used back in sports. Back in sports.
Yeah. Because we never hear about that sports fund. We know that uh, there is a board that was uh, populated yeah. Yeah. and appointed, and they are supposed to be Led sponsoring. Led by former Vice President, Vice President Moody Awardee. I've never seen him since his appointment. Yes. Exactly, I've never seen him since his appointment. So I'm tasking you with that but responsibility. You know, there's, there's already a tussle as we speak, because the sports fund is actually um, under the uh, Ministry of Sports. Ideally, it should be under the Ministry of Sports. Treasury the, wants it now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Treasury wants access to it now. So there's already a tussle there. We don't. Even, if there's somewhere that's used to channel money, it's it's a sporting industry. And unfortunately, we just have people who don't see the long-term vision. We have, see people who've made money uh, off sports. Uh, we have guys, and especially I hate this argument in the rugby fraternity, in our days we didn't have money. Does that give you the reason to steal now? No, it does not. But there are very many people in the sporting industry who use that as an example. So it's time, yes, for us guys to start. But let me tell you, it's not going to be easy because you are going to be hit left, right, and center because you're coming to break a system that has benefited a few. <laughs> but yeah. we have an act that supports you now. We have the Access to Information Act literally mandates them. And there's, they're not supposed, it, to be, it, it man not supposed to be any secrecy as far <laughs> as disclosure is concerned. It mandates them. But let me tell you, before you get that disclosure, <laughs> the red tape you're going to face. But that's why we have the CAJ. <laughs> that's why we have the CAJ <laughs> and the Ombudsman uh, to protect us, uh, honestly. Uh, to pro uh, you have it in paper. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what you use. Is it possible? Right, you know, practically, it's an ask. Yeah. Thanks, together. gentlemen, for coming through and helping us <laughs> in a sober, objective, and you know, exceptional discussion on the way forward as far as sports funding, funding is concerned. In the wake of Sport Pesa, one of the leading betting firms cancelling the sponsorship of all sporting activities in the country with regards to the, the tussle they have with the government on matters taxation. It's been a pleasure having you. Probably we shall be looking forward to see how that pans out and uh, keep an eye on the development and see probably there is a way Sport Pesa can rescind its decision to we hope so. continue <laughs> funding sporting activities and bring the likes of United Muraya's team uh, in Kenya to play against, um, say, Shaban FC, right? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 stay tuned. We are coming up next to the fan zone and last night Liverpool beat uh, uh, Norwich City 4-1 and uh, let's watch the highlights before we discuss international football transfers and European leagues in general.